For years, the American public has been victimized by the so-called cinematic geniuses, telling us time and again to see inferior movies, leaving us bitter and lost with no one return. But no more! This travesty of justice cannot and will not continue, because we now have the Cinema Judge! Hello and welcome to the Cinema Judge. First of all, to all my regular listeners who listen every episode, you know how much I appreciate this. Every episode, you tune in and listen. Thank you so much. And by the look of it, I think some of you are sharing it to other people because in other cities, I'm seeing more and more listens. So if that's you, thank you very much. And if you do want to share it, whatever platform you want to do it on, your Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, If you like it, share it. That would be awesome. And like I said last time, it's so outstanding to hear that some of you, and I'm going to borrow the name that you said, my my fellow judge heads, you actually use this like a book club. So either you listen to the show with your friends or together, and then you watch the movie. And then you you talk about what happened in the show and then how it is relative to the movie. That is so incredibly cool that you used this show to enhance your movie experience. That's what this is all about, the idea of sharing movies and being together. Even though sometimes right now it's not easy to be together, it's getting better, and maybe one day we will, but you could still use this as that tool as friends. You listen to it, get more information, and then you see if you want to see the movie or not, but then you hear what they say, and then it makes it more powerful when you see the movie. So thanks so much. Now, for you new listeners, let me tell you a little bit about our show. I've been doing this now as a cable access show for over 20 years in Bloomington, Minnesota. What I do there is I get press kits from the studio. I get interviews, on-the-set footage, B-roll, and I make one giant infomercial. I collect the evidence because I'm the judge, and I give it to you, the jury, and you make up your own mind. I'll tell you if I like it or if I don't like the movie, but I'll never tell you not to see a movie no matter what I think of it, because that's your call. I just provide the evidence. Because any movie is somebody's favorite movie. Who am I to tell you otherwise? I just can't. I can't handle that. I won't have it. I said I won't have it. So that's what we do on the TV show. So then when I make the podcast, I just get rid of the video, and I just introduce the interviews and say, here's so-and-so talking about so-and-so or what have you. So I've been doing that now for 20 years. And you might ask yourself, where can I see the said show? If you want to watch the TV version of this, it's on demand. You don't have to wait for it to air. You just watch it anytime you choose. If you go to Bloomington, Minnesota website, if you go to BLM, as in Bloomington, dot MN, backwards slash BTV dash shows. And when you get there, you just type in Cinema Judge, two words, and then a whole series of shows should pop up. 20 years worth? Of course not. But there are a few there. Why it took me so long to figure out to put on a podcast? Who knows? I just didn't put one and one together, but now I have. So I so enjoy sharing this with everybody. That's what this is all about. You won't hear me criticizing actors, directors, anything like that. They did something. What What did I do? If you could do better, prove it. That's all I ask of people. You can be critical of a movie, but if you can be critical of somebody in particular or just rip somebody that you didn't like the movie or if they liked it themselves, do better. Step up prove us otherwise. If you can do a better job, make something better. That's all I ask. So if you are a first time listener, thank you very much for stopping by. And if you like it, share it. Now approaching the bench today, we have the family film Finding Ohana. It's a Netflix film. You know with Netflix, they have bottomless pockets. They can do whatever they want and they don't generally skimp. They take you to the spot. They actually shoot this in Hawaii. I'm going to read pretty much what this show is about or the movie is about. A summer in rural Oahu takes an exciting turn for two Brooklyn-raised siblings when a journal pointing to a long-lost treasure sets them on an epic adventure with new friends and leads them to reconnect with their Hawaiian 
heritage. And what sets this movie also apart from many other films like it, the cast and crew are very young and eager. And a lot of the actors are actually Hawaiian. So that makes it far more authentic. Now that being said, I'm going to say this way in advance. I will butcher these names. So out of respect for them, I'm going to try to say it once. And after that, I'm just going to say this actor or the director or whatever, because they deserve the respect. I feel that way I'm not stumbling all over like I can and often do on many other names. So just a heads up, I will butcher some names. Now without further ado, here's a trailer for Finding Ohana. Kill your sister. Guys, look taller in the picture. Go ahead. Mahalo. Seems a little unsanitary. And I'm not spending my senior year stuck on this stupid island. Oh, these are nice. Aloha. Oh. Feel it? Uh. Helps from John with fancy business. Whose journal is this? Monks. He was a sailor on the Peruvian. Peruvian treasure's legendary. Hey! Why do you have a drawing of a night marcher? You know what that is? Ghosts of Hawaiian warriors. You said they march at night. I know they're coming when you hear their drums. Well, sleep tight. <gasps> Final notice. You're about to lose your house. This is our Ohana's land. I'm gonna die before I leave. All right! Ohana is a big part of you. You know why? Because you, Hawaiian. This was my papa's. And my papa's papa got this for a monk. It's real goaty. This is how we can get the money to help papa. Onward to treasure. <coughs> I wasn't that bad. <laughs> this is it. This is where the queen wanted us to go. What do you think's down there? I want to grab my sister who thinks she's Indiana Jones. We'll get them. My kids are inside a mountain looking for some Spanish gold. I have to enter. I mean, no disrespect. Your turn. What's up, Mountain? You looking beautiful right now. You're good. We can go now. We just have to go through the jaws of death. That sounds inviting. Oh! oh. <laughs> See? Piece of cake. Don't move. Why does it have so many eyes? Those aren't eyes. I know you're scared, but I'll be right here the whole time. I gotta do this for Papa. Run! Nene, come on! Hurry! One, two, three! I'm not as strong as I look. I only went to one CrossFit class. It was a free trial. Shut up! Up first, we have an actor named Alex. You might know him from the TV show Royal Crush, In Guidance. And here he is talking about the movie. Finding Ohana is, for me in like two sentences, it's about two kids, brother and sister, who through a series of extreme, crazy, adventure journey events, uh, reconnect with their culture and eventually uh, their, their family, their Ohana. Coming up next, we have Kelly Hugh who plays the mother in this film, of the two teenage children. You might know her from Ellie's Finest, Arrow, Young Justice, The Orville, and a 2018 film, Christmas Wonderland. She also did voice work for the Teenage Mutant Ninjas TV show. In this interview, she talks about the story in her character. And what I really like about this interview too, they did this interview outside. And what really cracks me up is, you know it's in Hawaii, because you hear all the birds in the background. Because if you've been there, you know they're everywhere. So here she is with the birds. Leilani is um, the mother of Pili and um, and and Ioane, and um, and she has lost her husband uh, ten years before this, and decides to move her and the kids to New York, uh, where she's been a struggling single mom. And uh, she comes back to Hawaii when her father, Kimo, has a heart attack. Um, and, um, and when she comes back, she has to face all of her issues and, um, and face all of the things that she ran away from. 
Coming up next, we have the young actress who plays the daughter in this film talking about the character and the movie. It's about two siblings, and I'm one of them, from Brooklyn, New York. Our mom is a single mom. She works double shifts. She works really hard, but it's really hard to get to spend time with her. And she's basically scared to come back to Hawaii because she lost the love of her life last time she was here. So we come back because her dad, my grandpa that I never met before, has a heart problem. And we don't want to be here. I mean, between us being from New York, it's very different. It's a very different envi environment. It's very hot. There's chickens around parking lots. It's just not something that we're used to. So when we come, we're, we like really, we hate it here. But the more and more time we spend here, we find out the true meaning of Aloha. Coming up next, we have the director of this film talking about how much she enjoyed working with the actress that just came before, Kea, and talks a little bit about her and the character. Kea is Peely. Well, Kea doesn't like mango, and she actually knows how to swim, but other than those things, Kea really is Peely. Like, Kea is so brave. She's fearless. She's a little brash. Um, and so it was so wonderful to see Kea just lose herself in the role. It was just remarkable. We're going to play a clip from Finding Ohana. Now I'm going to try to set this up the best that I can. In this scene, we have that young girl and her mother's downstairs, played by Kelly Hugh. And in this scene, the daughter goes to this cabinet, and she opens it up, and she finds a picture of her mother and her father, which she's never seen before. And just around that same time, her mom comes up the steps just to see what's going on, and she sees this picture and realizes she had forgotten that she had that picture. And then they just share a little mother-daughter moment. So here's a clip from Finding Ohana. Mom, where did you say the Hawaiian Dictionary was? Did you look at my desk? Sugarcane, did you hear me? Did you find the... <laughs> Never seen this pic of dad before. Cool. I forgot I had this. Uh, Peely, I know that you're upset about not being able to go to your camp. So, what if you and I go geocaching tomorrow? Yeah, I haven't looked up the caches around here yet. I bet they have some really cool ones. Great. Well, tomorrow then. And like I said earlier in the show, this movie is loaded with young, up-and-coming actors and actresses. Up next, we have Lindsay Watson, who plays Hannah, or Hannah, and she's talking about the story and what it's about. Finding Ohana is a film really about being true to who you are and where you come from, um, especially as a character, Hana. I like to bring light to the backstory, especially of the Hawaiian culture, and make you realize that you don't have to be ashamed of where you come from. Coming up next, we have the director of this film talking about Lindsay Watson in her character, Hana. I see Lindsay as the, the soul of, and almost the docent of Hawaiian culture. You know, uh, her character, Hana, is um, not only Hawaiian, um, and a proud Hawaiian, you know, there's a part of her that wants to leave and pursue something else, but there's a great fear of, you know, leaving Hawaii behind. Coming up next, we hear again from Lindsay Watson. And in the next interview, she talks about how much the director truly cared and how much she was trying to interact with her to make sure the character was authentic. She right off the top came to me, which again sets the tone with her. Day one was like, if you feel like anything's not correct, I know you went to school in Hawaii, you grew up in Hawaii, let me know. Because if anything's wrong, no question, we're fixing it. She wanted to make sure everything was accurate to a T. Now we're going to play another clip from this film. And in this clip, Lindsay is standing in front of a cave. And she's standing there with Ione, played by Alex. And she has to make an offering to the cave. He tries to do one himself, and it's quite not so elegant. I'm sorry, but... I have to enter. Uh, I mean, no disrespect, and I do this with a clean heart. Mahalo. Aw, oh, is that an offering? Yes, Iowane. 
Okay. Me? Your turn. <laughs> What's up, Mountain? Look, you looking beautiful right now. We gotta get up in that cave, so... We're good. We can go now. Ladies first. <laughs> up next, we're going to hear from Lindsay Watson. She's going to talk about how proud she is to finally have a whole film dedicated to Hawaiian culture. I can feel myself like being really proud of my Hawaiian culture and bringing it to the screen, and that's the biggest thing. We've, as Hawaiian people, have never really been represented on the screen on such a big platform. Next, you can hear from the actor who's playing the character Kimo, and he too shares how much he enjoys having Hawaiians on the set and behind the camera. We've got native Hawaiians here in the crew, which is nice to have behind the camera, and in front of the camera. Uh, I've had the great chance of working with Kelly Hu, who is from Kamehameha High School. And I married a girl from Kamehameha as well. And uh, I never get to play Hawaiians. I usually play the bad guy, you know, or uh, I'm also part Native American as well as Polynesian. My father from Tahiti, my mother from Hawaii, my grandmother from Maui. So uh, what an honor for me to play this part. You're going to hear next from Kelly Hugh, who also shares the same excitement everybody else is saying also. She's Hawaiian, and how much sharing the culture with everybody is so important. I am part Hawaiian, and, um, and this really is a story about Hawaii and Hawaiian families and, um, and, and, the, and the culture and the language. I mean, I actually get to speak Hawaiian in this, which is awesome. And um, and it just it, it it it's so respectful of the culture and and the people and um, and just being able to 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 show the rest of the world uh, who we are and what we're about and sharing our aloha spirit it's um, it's really so exciting for me. Coming up next, we're going to have the actor that was in the Goonies, Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom, and Encino Man. In this interview, in his opinion, he explains why he thinks this is the next best thing to a Goonies sequel. One of the, the, the most asked questions from Goonies fans for the last, you know, 30-something years is, well, are we ever going to get a Goonies 2? And I think finding Ohana is as close as we'll ever get. Well, no, that's a big challenge. That's what I love about this show. He's taking a big swing on that one, saying that this is close to that. So that's why this show is even made. This is the evidence. I'm presenting it to you. Do you think so? That's why you got to see the movie. Is he right or is he wrong? That's totally up to you. Up next, he talks about how this is very close to the story, at least, to the Goonies. It's just like Goonies. It's about them finding, you know, a, a treasure map and going on this amazing adventure, you know. I mean, there's no better story than that. We're going to play another clip for you. In this clip, we have the mother walking with her two children. And as they're walking, the kids are arguing back and forth, and they walk up to the mother's father. And she kind of chews them out a little bit for doing all this work. You know what's stupid? Your face. You know what's stupid? Buying two pairs of shoes and only wearing one of each. You know what's stupid? You, you know what's hey! stupid? Hey! What you guys doing? You buggers arguing over here, making any kind. Give you guys dirty lickies like that. What did he say? Dad, what are you doing up there? You're supposed to be in bed resting. I Kanaka, I live in on the Aina. You know, for 10 years, I had nobody telling me what to do. You come over here, you tell me what to do. Dr. Campo said he wants you on bed rest. I don't care what Dr. Campo wants to say. You didn't have to come over here. Of course we're gonna come. You guys look more taller in the picture. More skinny too. Up next, we're gonna have the guy that was in that scene who plays the grandfather talking about working with such a great cast. What a cast. I'm not talking about myself. I'm going to talk about these four wonderful folks, these young stars of tomorrow, you know. Kea, oh my gosh. A big ball comet flying through the sky, landing here on Earth and playing this part. She's wonderful. Uh, she plays my granddaughter. Or I should say, I play her grandfather. She's terrific. I love her. She's like my Ohana already. Up next, we're going to hear from the director. She's going to talk about 
the love interest in this story. His name is Alex in real life. It's just fun hearing her talking about how full of energy this guy is and what he's bringing to this film. Alex Iono is the class clown. Um, sometimes you meet certain actors who, you know, I call them like the Ferraris of comedy. You know, you don't want to keep them in the garage. You want to let them out and race and race and race and race. Well, he was one of those actors, you know, again, first time actor, but so in touch with his feelings. Up next, we're going to hear from Alex talking about all the great moments in this film. The movie's got so many good, rich moments, whether it be celebratory moments like we're filming right now where we find ground zero, whether it be fearful moments where we're running from the night marchers, whether it be romantic moments where Hannah and E have their, their final moment where they're together in the hospital getting ready to kiss, whether it be um, classic brother and sister banter like Peely and E have, or, or the creation of a friendship like uh, Casper and Peely have. There's so many rich moments that I think the movie encompasses all of them into one amazing, family-friendly, beautiful film. We're going to play another clip for you. In this clip, we're going to have Alex and his sister, and they're talking in the bedroom. And he's kind of playing with her a little bit, just making her feel a little bit afraid. He's telling her a story about you'll hear the drums, then you'll see lights. It's just one of those great examples of siblings interacting. You'll know they're coming when you hear their drums. Then you'll see their torches. Like a string of lights. If you hear their shell horn thing, forget it. They're close. <laughs> if they find you. What? You better kiss the ground and keep your head down. Because if not, remember that scene from Raiders of the Lost Ark where the Nazis' faces melt off? That. Well, sleep tight. Coming up next, we hear from Alex. He talks about his character and the character's arc throughout this film. I play the role of E, uh, and I'm the most stubborn of all of the characters. I am New York, in and out. I know I was born and sort of raised in Hawaii, but New York is my heart and soul. I'm very, very clean, I'm very, very organized, and I'm a complete contrast to my sister Peely in the movie. And through the movie, I definitely have, I feel like, the largest arc that goes from this New York, clean, germaphobe, always organized, to falling in love with a, like a, just from the island Hawaiian girl, and then ending up you know, on the other side, which is learning my culture, loving my culture, loving my name, actually going by my full name versus my one letter New York styled nickname. Um, and it's really, really cool getting to embody that because I feel like as somebody who thinks culture is super important, getting to play somebody who goes from A to Z is a, is a super great experience. Now coming up next, we're going to hear from the young actress who plays the sister of Alex. Alex is honestly like a real brother to me. Even when we're off camera, we still argue and fight, which is funny, so it actually makes it a lot easier for when we do have to argue on camera. Coming up next, we're going to play another clip from this film. Now in this clip, it's Goonie-esque. They're in this giant cave, and when they're standing in there, there's a, like a rope bridge that stretches across from one spot to another, and they're all trying to figure out how to get across. Yo, what are you doing, Hana? Uh, I'll be right there. Hana's not a big fan of heights. Then how's she gonna cross at that? You know, Hana, we're probably not that high up. It's not that deep. Me and Casper will cross the bridge first. Wait, what? what? No, you're not test running this death trap. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's not call it that. We're the lightest out of you two. If anyone should test it, it should be us. It's true. You have a lot of muscles, and muscle is heavy. I do have a lot of muscles now that I think of it. Really? Now, what are you guys talking about? Nothing. It'll be fine. Watch. Oh. 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 There it goes. 
Up next, we're going to hear from the director. She talks about what a joy it was to make this film. Two years have passed and we're still working on this movie. Um, but what a privilege, like every day is a joy. I, I wake up happy every day and so grateful to have had this opportunity to get to tell this story. So it's truly a gift. Coming up next, you're going to hear from Alex, the love interest in this story. And in this interview, he talks about how excited he is to be part of this movie and how he likes working with this director because she does a thing called Fun Run. I just love hearing his enthusiasm. The guy's so eager, passionate about being on set. You know, who knows what his future will hold. But at least at the moment, he's excited and he's eager to just be part of it. My favorite thing about working on this movie is that Jude loves letting us kind of improv, do whatever we feel, um, try new things even if it's not written in the script already and so um, she does this thing called Fun Run and when she says Fun Run it's like whatever it goes. Like literally you can make jokes, you can go completely off script, you can talk about whatever you want. Uh, so I'm very very excited. Hopefully she lets us do a Fun Run. Let's go! Well I hope you enjoyed our in-depth look at Finding Ohana. Remember, this movie is currently streaming on Netflix. Now, there's a lot more that I did on the TV show, so I didn't put it all on this. The reason why is I've heard some people say they don't like podcasts too long because they don't have that much time to listen. They're going to work or getting ready for work, whatever they're doing. So if you do want to watch the full TV version of this, remember, you can go watch this anytime online. You go to blm, as in Bloomington, dot mn, backward slash, btv, Dash shows. And when you're there, you just type in Cinema Judge. And then, of course, this show will show up. And if you're ever interested in talking movies, sharing movies, talking anything about the show or what have you, there is a Cinema Judge group on Facebook. Cinema Judge Podcast and TV Show. Join up so then we could all talk movies in, a, in any upcoming shows or podcasts. And now I want to thank so many of you regular, consistent Faithful listeners, I am so grateful for you guys from all around the world, really, from Brazil. I had a couple more listeners from there, so if you shared this this show, thank you so much. The more the merrier. Australia, France, Ireland, Ukraine, all you guys who stopped by to listen with all your busy lives, everything that you do, you make time to listen to here. And I'm not going to lie, I love thinking about this every time I, I look and say, hey, somebody else listened, and it gives me a vague you know, city, state, country. So then I always in my mind go, how were you listening? Where were you listening? And even sometimes when I'm really just feeling fun, I'll like check it out on a map and say, wow, where's this located? Where are they at? Wow, this is so cool that you're taking time out of your life wherever you are to listen to this. So it doesn't just feel like I'm talking to nobody here in my basement. To my listeners in Minneapolis, Chesapeake, Virginia, I have some more listeners there. Or maybe you just listened to it more than once. Either way, that's super But if you're sharing it, thank you so much. To my new listeners in Columbus, Ohio, thank you. I really appreciate it. Santa Monica, California, you guys have all that sun, all that fun, and you are listening to this show, and I think somebody else shared it with somebody else, or maybe you listened to it again. Either way, thank you so much. Is it Shuring, Wisconsin? Denver, Colorado? Sydney, New South Wales? How cool is that? Dallas, Texas? Our, now, I'm going to say this wrong because I butchered names. Amarillo, Texas, thank you so much for stopping by. Compton, California. Stevens Point, Wisconsin. Beaverton, Oregon. Burbank, California. Prior Lake, Minnesota. Dublin, Georgia, thank you. Rosemount, Minnesota. La Vista, Nebraska. Is it La Canada, Flint Ridge, California? Whatever brought you here, thank you. And if you like it, share with somebody else. It's so great to see people listening. Cottage Grove. And I'll probably say this wrong too. Chapmanville, West Virginia. Thank you for taking time out of your life. Washington, Virginia. Owanico, Illinois. I probably said that wrong, but thank you for tuning in. And just an, another one that I'm going to butcher the name on, but I'm going to try it anyway. Cheektowaga, New, New York. Did I say that anywhere close to it? Probably not, but thank you. Is it Hogue, Ohio? H-O-U-G-H. Whatever it is, thank you. Oakdale, Minnesota. In Limerick, Pennsylvania, just to name a few, you guys are outstanding. Like I said earlier, I'm going to borrow the name that somebody else is using. Thank you to all the judge heads out there. Sharing it and getting the word out there, this is fantastic. Maybe one day, maybe one day, this show will become big enough, and then somebody will willingly come on the show, and we could talk movies. Maybe a you know an actor or somebody in the movie that we're talking about. Not saying it could happen, but it could. We, a boy can dream, right? So that's that's the goal. More listeners. The more chance somebody 
real could come on and talk about their movie. So until next time, be well, be good, and I'm gone. I'm Jeff. Thanks for listening to The Cinema Judge. (laughs) 